Hey guys, um, welcome back to Aquaponic Gardens. We're indoors today. Winter, spring's still not here. It's spring, but it's still freezing outside. Um, we do a quick update on my indoor system. I just did a big hut, oh, did a fairly decent sized little harvest out of here today. As you can see from the first shot of the show, this is uh, my um, capsicum plant, uh, pepperoni, and, uh, pepper, country and what you want to call it. Everything's going really well under the LEDs. I'm really happy with these LEDs. Um, next week, I'll, in well, the next couple of weeks, I'll be taking most of the stuff outside from my outdoor aquaponic garden. Another pepperoni plant there. They're flowering a lot at the moment. You can see all the flowers in there. Yet to get my first fruit for this harvest, but uh, that'll be coming in the next few days. This is thick as like a few minutes ago. I just had to thin it out a little bit. Do some dinner as well. Fuck toys done really well as always. Salad. The dill is going absolutely berserk. That's the reason why I came down here. The dill is nearly taking over everything. Here's a pile of dill I just pulled out of there. As you can see, um, it's a lot. We'll be drying that out. Um, ready to be using on our tilapia when they're ready. It's, you know, two or three hundred grams. Fresh dill there, I not dry it so much, got some stevia, um, the bok choy on top there, and the bok choy to the side a little bit, got heaps of rocket, um, rucola, rocket, whatever you want to call it, some citrona melissa, um, lemon, no, we call it lemon melissa, lemon, make tea out of it, you make cordial and so. Syrup, according syrup, according Deutsch, in German. Um, so there's lots of basil. Did all the tipping of the basil today. Tipped out most of the plants. Tipped all the stevia plants. Uh, got the stevia here. Nobody's tried that. It's a really must. Um, it's like 150 times sweeter than sugar or something. Um, I love this stuff. It's a bit funny in taste to get used to. It's so sweet. But um, I use it to touch in a salad. So you put it in your coffee, put it in your tea, it's better than this fucking chemical. Sugar, they feed us these days. Vertical towels are planted outside. Um, oh, as I said, most of the stuff will be going out to um, the outdoor system in the next few days. Uh, hopefully it warm, keeps, oh, it's warming up, it gets up to 20 degrees this week Celsius. Um, hopefully it stays that way. If you look at my deep water culture down here, this is um, about half a metre to a metre deep of water underneath here. Salads are doing really well. Um, uh, Swiss chard. The buck joy just loves it under here. Uh, I trim this thing every few days, you can see under here. Now, I prune out all the branches here, they have really need them. Nearly every few days, just pruning, pruning. I think this doesn't stop like growing. I won't complain. Love the stuff. Great for stir fries, great the small leaves are great in salads. As the leaves get older they're a little bit bitter, but um, nothing to complain about. That little sucker down there, that's a citru uh, lemongrass. Um, got another little one over here. Got a whole field of it growing upstairs in my other aquaponic system. Some more John Gray hiding in the sea in. Yeah, so fish are growing really well. Even though we have these new LEDs, they don't seem to mind of one little bit. These are the pink nails. Easy to see in the tanks, that's one great thing about them. They're always hungry. Um, only about 250 left in this tank. I mean, selling them like hotcakes, so I just can't keep on enough fish in my tanks at the moment. 
see if we can sneak a peek at the big fish in this tank today. Hopefully we'll be able to see them swimming around in there. And uh, it's about um, 30 or 40, 500 to 600 grams fluffy in this tank. As you can see, I don't run an air stain in this tank. This is an emergency airline. This won't run until oxygen supplies drop, which means the power's gone out or something. I rotate the water uh, four times an hour. It means it does a great water exchange and that keeps my oxygen levels cranked up to five and a half to six milligrams a litre. Um, I hope you can see, I think you will see in the camera. I hope you can see what's in there. Just read on top there, I should have done the video before I fed them. Uh, they're actually in full breeding at the moment, that's why there's so much food still on the surface. It gives me a sign that half the fish are holding eggs and they'll be getting harvested next Saturday. Um, I think we've got about another 15,000 babies to come out of that tank. This tank is breeded tank number two. Um, as you can see, fish food on top again. Not a great sign that um, they're all holding eggs again. These are slightly smaller, three to four hundred grams. This is a different variety. This is um, Hororum or Wami tilapia, as some people call them. Crossed with the Mos uh, Mozambiques. In the other tank, I had Nile crossed with the uh, Hororum or the you know, Wami. I always call them Wami. The things they bloody say is a couple bloody words. So all uh, Oreochromus. Um, breed of course, um, with the hybridization, I created 95% and uh, 95 to 97% all male tilapia. Um, I just basically can't breed enough fish at the moment. It's got a bit of an aquaponic stream here in Switzerland. The first few years, I seemed like I was the only person crazy enough to be doing it over in this country. And um, it seems to be catching on in a hobby form. Uh, there's one company that tries to do it commercially. I also went to commercial. Um, end of the day, I want to feed the people. and the people to feed themselves. So the only way to guarantee yourself is um, organic produce. It's a grow your own organic produce. Okay, tank number four is what's left of my last couple of harvests, I don't know, it's a, a few months ago, actually, a month, harvest a month before. That was a quick look in there, sitting, got a few little babies. Um, this is a contraption I made up, you can see these babies in there. This separates my, my harvest, gives me an extra fish tank. It's just a floating raft with some PVC wrapped around it, as you can see. I don't really like that wood idea, but uh, actually it hasn't done any harm yet. It doesn't get mouldy. It has a couple of mushrooms grow out of it. Um, eight them stuck in. A little tasty, actually. Don't see any mushrooms. I know I do a lot of mushroom picking here in Switzerland, and I know my mushrooms have a lot of food in there because they don't have feeding automats. I just throw a heap full of food in there. Over the next hour or two, they'll probably pull that off. They put, the food's a little bit too small for them, so they wait till it softens. And they pull it off. As you can see, plenty of aeration going in there. Just on the water flow. These snails, you can see on the side there. Just down there. And there. They get put bread in this tank as well. The baby fish only eat the very, very small ones. And they don't eat it up of them, you see more snails over on the side. I pick these snails out, throw them in the big fish, and gobble gobble, free fish food, full of vitamins, full of protein, full of ca like calcium, and they're very important minerals. Doesn't give me a lot of free fish food, but uh, they clean my tanks and they balance, you know, give me balance to their diet a little bit more. They give me a bit of free vitamins. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this update and um, I haven't had any problem with pests uh, since summer's come around. 
Um, I've put in an extra 300 spiders, three to 500 spiders in the last few months, and uh, this tends to keep everything under wraps. Spiders are wonderful creatures. Should have thought about it sooner. I've been using ladybugs and a few other different types of insects. They don't match anything like a spider. Spider also you eat your ladybugs, so you gotta watch out for them. But um, I haven't had any trouble with um, aphids at all in this room. This room I always put, change my clothes before I come down here. Put a sterile environment down here. Quilt is working awesome. Um, I think you've all seen my filter before, but I will give you another quick look down in the filter. As you can see, she just keeps on running, runs around 35 watts. I've uh, got my stuffing density, so I have to have a micron filter. Um, it's a sieve filter, uh, sieve filter. So the water just sprays through there, blows all the pearl away. I've hooked up an airline to the bottom of the sieve. And this keeps the, once the pearl is pushed away, keeps it off of the sieve. So it's always clear in that one place. Um, I had a couple of problems with overflow, but mainly due to the fact that I didn't clean enough. As you see, snails in here as well. That brown stuff down the bottom there is fish cap, fish teeth. Uh, I leave it in there for about three or four days. The snails going crazy there. Right? Going to get a harvest of snails out of here in the next few days, feeding to my fish. Okay, guys. Thanks again, and um, I thought I'd show you veggies, the salads and stuff I picked today. I go up and set them out to dry in our drying racks. Any questions, please leave a message for me down the bottom. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Pretty busy with um, reading at the moment. Someone's coming around and everyone wants to get their small outdoor systems up and cranking. Okay, guys. Have fun, keep growing, stay tuned, girls.